Hello everybody, my name is John Hammond, we're looking at Pico CTF 2017, moving into the forensics category in level 1 here. So the first challenge is a 50 point challenge, so we jump off big. Uh, digital camouflage, let's check out this challenge. We need to gain access to some routers, let's try and see if we can find the password in the captured network data. I don't know why I put that inflection in there, totally not as necessary. It looks like someone logged in with their password earlier, where would the login be and located in a network capture? If you think you found the flag doesn't work, consider the data might be encrypted. Okay, so data.pcap, we can go ahead and download that. Um, I'm going to have to copy link address and do some wget magic because people yell at me for that. So let's make a directory, digital camouflage. Sweet. Uh, if you haven't used wget before, it will just download stuff for you. If you give it a link, it will go ahead and create that file after it gets it from a web page. So now we have data.pcap. If you haven't seen a pcap file before, it is a archive of packet captures. It is, it is a packet capture, <laughs> um, an archive of package. Pack, packets, whatever. Um, Wireshark or TCP Shark, T, sorry, T Shark, TCP Dump, and other other cool programs will allow you to look at these things, look at these packets, and these packets are like digital representations of communication between things. I was going to say stuff, but I don't know if that's between stuff. Yeah, whatever. I'm really bad at videos today. Computers talk to each other, and that happens through packets and different kinds of protocols. So you can take advantage of that and look through it in stuff called a Wireshark. And if you're on Linux, you should be able to just run sudo apt install Wireshark. And if you're on Ubuntu anyway, using apt as your package manager, you can do that. Sudo will ask you for your password, blah, 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 because you need to be root. And once it's installed, you can open up Wireshark. And if you want to give it an argument doing it from the command line, you can open that file that way, or use your GUI and just Wireshark it up. So, we can open that file, digital camouflage, open it up, and in Wireshark, we are, we are, we're greeted by, th by three panes, by three vertical segments here. Up on the bottom, up on the bottom, <laughs> down on the bottom, is the, like, raw dump of the packet that we're looking at. On the left-hand side, you see it in hex, and on the right side over here, you see ASCII. So, hex those hexadecimal numbers here, like 0 through 9 and A through F, like we've seen before. And ASCII will have, hopefully, like actual English, once it's converted to like ASCII text, depending on whether or not it actually contains that in the package, in the packet. I don't know why I keep calling it package, my bad. You can look at individual like headers or specific segments of information that are specified in the specification of a packet to have this specific meaning. Like, okay, maybe this number of bytes represents the version number. You can see it highlighted down there in the actual like raw dump. And you can also see these things noted in that specific frame category section. <laughs> Up on the top, you have a listing of all of the different packets and they're displayed typically in different color depending on the protocol or what actually happened with them. So you can see HTTP, and that's noted in green. And you can see, okay, there's some English words down there that you actually can follow through with. And HTTP has a lot of information typically because that is the communication protocol between like websites, right? Hypertext transfer protocol. So that's how you're accessing web pages and talking to servers on the internet, websites. So when you go to a web page, you get a page, just like we did with WGET, you're getting information, etc. So if we're trying to find a password, it's probably not going to be all the in these destination unreachable port things that are broken up or UDP things that don't have anything interesting in them, etc. We probably want to see things in like actual HTTP because you can see communication that's going through there. However, looking at these packets through this raw dump isn't very easy. Like it's cut up in that small, super tiny column there. So if you have a packet that you want to examine and look more at, you can right click it in the top pane and scroll down to follow. And you can typically follow the TCP stream or the HTTP stream or whatever like kind of protocol you're looking at here. I'll click TCP stream and it will show, okay, here's the raw information that's going through the HTTP protocol to be have information posted to a page on a website, in our case, whatever IP address this is. And it talks about like, okay, what browser are we, are we using? What are the other headers that come along with it? So like the user agent, are we using Firefox, Mozilla Firefox, right? Et cetera, other hosts that we're looking at, other headers that come with it. And we'll get a response. You can see down below the red is the client and the blue is the server, kind of denoted in, in, in 
Wireshark here. So there are variables being posted to this page, and it says the user ID is Stevens J, and password, I'm assuming, PSWRD, is equal to all of this stuff. But there's a percent %3D, %3D. Percent we could try and submit this um, as our flag, but we will quickly be greeted by the fact that that is not the case. Paste it in? No. So what we're seeing here is a URL encoding. Because you can see 3D, that looks like hex, right? And it occurs twice, and the percent sign's there. So there's percent encoding when you're trying to include special characters going through HTTP, going through that protocol across the web. You can Google that stuff if you want, like URL encoding, and it will explain to you, okay, you've got stuff that is going to go through with a percent sign. I'm trying to zoom in here so you can see it. I give you a little bit of information down below. And there are reserved characters after percent encoding, etc. So you'll see that percent sign and a hex value. So equals is what's percent 3D. So if we wanted to just paste in this thing, we could encode this, and that double encodes it for us. We want to go the other way around. We want to decode. Can I do that? Okay, decode. Sweet. Paste it in, decode, and now you can see it's just those equal signs. So I don't know if you've seen this before, but that is base64. That's data that is com not compressed, but just denoted in a different way or encoded in a different way to look like other alphanumeric characters. And they typically end in equal signs because they use that for padding. Base64 has to be a length of uh, a multiple of four. So if it's not, it'll use a number of equal signs at the end to make sure it is that length. So if it needs to, you may see no equal signs at the end, so it is a proper length of four, multiple of four, or one equal sign, two equal sign, or three equal signs, because it has to use that as a padding character to make the length a multiple of four. Great. We can base64 decode that. We've done that stuff before. You can do it in bash. Echo that string, pipe it into base64, tack D, and whatever this is, is supposedly our password, right? flag dot text yep cool let's go ahead and submit it and we're in i don't know what i just said there we are in <laughs> we got it right challenge solved sweet so how else can we do this well just for your teaching stuff just for your learning ability your your learnability um wireshark is obviously processing this pcap data as a file so there's stuff in here that looks like kind of raw, gross, hex, binary data, and you won't be able to read all of that as plain text. But other stuff, like when you're looking at HTML pages or other things that are plain text, like this looks like the source of a web page, right? Because it is. Because that's what's being transferred over HTTP. That's plain text. So we can use stuff like strings or command line tools to be able to just see, okay, the printable characters in a file. We can use that to find just regular plain text. So why not try and hunt for this now? Why not try and, like, strings data.pcap, blah, blah, blah. And then we can start to look for things like flag, if we wanted to, tag i for case insensitive, or password. Okay, it looks like that tells us for a little bit of recon, again, if, if we want to do this manually or not. That is the variable name in HTTP that we're looking for, PSWRD. If we look through that, now we see it. PSWRD. Cool. We want to cut that up. Cut tag D. Equal sign. F3, right? Yep. Let's get the very last one there so we get the last line. Can I replace multiple characters like that? I don't know. Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right. How could I URL encode in Bash? Is there a way to do that? Well, we could do this completely disgusting and horrible trick, but maybe that will teach you interesting things. Let's capture this uh, output or line in a variable with a while loop, just like that, and then let's echo that out. And we can use the curly braces to denote a special syntax in Bash that lets us do things with these variables. So we can replace there, if we use a forward slash after the name of it, 3D, because that's what we want to replace, and we want to replace that with an equal sign and that didn't work for me because I might need to escape that. Okay, did it once. How do I do it again? <laughs> Will it do it again? No. 
Oh, if I note a, another forward slash, it will remove it there. Okay, cool, but now I just have a stray D at the very end. That wasn't in there before. That must be just a stray character from the from the strings output. But we can still base64 decode it and then get rid of the error that's being displayed on standard error when we just get a random D over there by taking that number two, the standard error stream, redirecting that to dev null and making it go away in the in the bit bucket in the digital trash can. So that's gross, but hey, whatever, that's a neat one-liner. <laughs> cool things. Let's put that in a get flag script. I just like to, I don't know, explore those. I, I hope that wasn't too torturous. Maybe you learned something. Learned how to type, because I don't know how to do that. All right, there. There is our flag. We can mark this as complete. And that's that. That is the digital camouflage challenge, uh, the first segment of the forensics category in Pico CTF level one. So, sweet. We're moving through them. Hey, I want to give a special shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. The video is over. You can leave if you want, but I got to spread some love. These people are awesome, and I can't say it enough. I can't say thank you enough. One dollar a month on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. Um, Five dollars a month will give you early access to my videos before I put them on YouTube, before they are released. And if you did like this video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment if you're willing to subscribe. And if you really want to support me, check me out on Patreon. And my website, www.johnhammond.com.org. That's the one. It's, the, it's .org. There are too many top-level domains here, man. We got, like, .net. We got .edu. We got all the 